Howdy, howdy. This is uh, Ricardo Montalban and my sidekick, Jody Batum, an accomplished Texas state champion, very recent. Uh, also a TOC champion and uh, what else? Uh, like President of the National 42 Players Association. Points winner two or three times. Three. Three times. So, yes, many, a very accomplished player over here. Me, two-time Dixie Chicken 42 and Brew champion. So, you know, I, you know, we both accomplished some and he's more. But uh, anyway, so what we're going to talk about today is the state of the game of 42 in 2022, year of our Lord Anno Domini. So, uh, Jody, uh, what would you say, just as a summary of like from when you were a kid to now, what would you say the game has, has done? Well, more people played when I was a kid up into my 20s as far as uh, fun games. You ran into a lot of people that knew how to play 42. Casual. Average wise. And it was easy to get a game to play 42 as much as it was to get a game of Monopoly. Okay. Or any other thing. But the last uh, 15 years or so. The it, smartphone revolution. The, the smartphone revolution uh, or revolution. It's obvious that the, the, the frequency of average plays is going down. Right. The people that know how to play 42 or know of playing 42 is, less. is definitely shrinking. Mm, yes, indeed. So, uh, and I would definitely agree that in the case of just the Aggies, for instance, uh, whenever you have players that had grown up and cut their teeth at the Dixie Chicken, that usually they're, they're in their 30s or 40s. They're not in their 20s and late 20s or teens and 20s. Um, just because... Twitter and Facebook and the smartphone are so compelling that they don't they don't have time for a game that doesn't involve electronics. It's true. Yeah. So and my own kids actually have the same deal. Anyway. So okay. Well, that is what that is. So uh, what I I would argue that the main goal of the National Forty Two Player Association and people that are interested in the game in general uh, would be to grow the game. So that we're, we're trying to keep it alive. But probably not going to get to where you were as a kid. But just generally trying to keep the game from dying out. I think that if we worked at it, if we did things cause, uh, that purposely tried to cultivate the game in ways that people who aren't playing are turned into people who play, hmm. all right? That's your biggest hurdle, but that's your instant reward. Right now, we just try to find the people that know how to play. We try to connect them and, or, with and other people that know how to play. Get them interested in playing. And we get them interested in playing again. In an organized tournament. In an organized tournament. Right. Or... We, they go, uh, hey, I'm in Hearn. Uh, do you know of any other players in Hearn? We get a lot and of queries like we, this. We huh? do. We, when we say, these are the people that we know that are closest in your area. And if they have enough of them, they can start you know, playing uh, locally. In right. Area. So Morgan Scott, perhaps you're familiar with Morgan Scott, as you played against him in the final table at the state championship. Um, and blocked him from... Repeating his stitch. He's a great player. He is a great player. Uh, the way he said it is, if Cornhole is on TV. <laughs> now, the unfinished part of that statement is, well, how is 42? How is it you don't have like a World Series of 42? 42 is not nearly as fun to watch, watch as, as it is to play. Well, you that's... can watch poker in Texas Hold'em. Sure. You can watch Cornholio. You can watch darts. Uh, you can watch curling. You can't watch 42. It's not really meant to watch. You don't watch Bridge. He's got two threes. <laughs> right? And he's born, he did 37. Right. Yeah, because no. you're, you're, a lot of what you do is hidden. Right. And you don't, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't translate well as far as watching the game. Now playing the game, it's it's uh, it's thrilling, right? In in its own right. Cases. So I would I would also argue that another way to grow the game for players that are in 
places. Like we do have a few members of the M42PA that are in Germany. Yes. Or Brazil. Yes. And that they typically are just by themselves. Um, and one of the challenges they have is how do I cultivate opponents that I can play with in a place where I'm basically playing the apps or I'm playing online or right. something like this. If I could wave a magic wand and change how the world works, I would change a few things to really? make people play 42 more. The first of all... Get rid of all the nuclear weapons. I'm not happy. I've actually been involved in some of the developments of the apps. Sure. And they don't cross the threshold of what it's really like to play. To play a person. A person. Right. And so you don't have the ability to make a mistake where it would cost you a mark with any app. Like I've said. Right. Like if, sometimes it'll even prevent you from and it, from it prevents you from playing an illegal domino. Right. And therefore. But in real life you but can. But in real life you can. Sure. And so. The Jedi Mind Trick. The Jedi See a five, play a five. You know, you hold that. So if you had an app that the computer setting at least took the bumpers off and, and, and you know, let you play and it was more like real life, you'd become a much better player. Right. So the first thing I would do is I would change the app software. Right. And maybe that's what we'll do after we're done with Sure. And if someone from the Google artificial intelligence <laughs> team that developed the artificial intelligence that beat the Chinese Go champion. Right. I know you can make a better bot. You know. Than these apps that are just a bag of idiots. Right. Once you get people to sign into an app, you can get them to say, do I want to play a computer or do I want to play a real player? Right. And then you can get people in Germany, people that, there's no way I can find people that play 42, but I can play online. Right. Anytime I want. Like there's a site, Shoot42. That's really the best way to get different people. Remote people. Remote. And the nice thing about Shoot42 is it's a web app. Yes. So you can play it on. And it's a good, it's a, it's a good rock solid you know, but if you want to know, I don't know how to play 42, and you play this app, right. you would know how to play 42. So one thing I've discovered about playing on Shoot 42 is that you definitely want to host the game, because if you join a game, you're under the rules of the host. Ah. So one thing I've noticed is the default rules allow things like mellow and high and low. There's a lot of variants. Right. So, and I have seen this. In fact, I feel like I'm kind of cheating if I don't disclose this, where I host the game, but I don't allow mellow. In my game. And then you'll see people that'll go a mark, and you can see that they are going to go Nello, and they're waiting for the drop-down choice that is not there because I forbid it. That's true. So, right, so usually in those games, I'll actually, if I see a real player join, right. I'll actually go in the chat and I'll say, oh, you know, right. you're not allowed to go Nello, don't think you can. But if you had an app that really had very accurate computer play, that yes. was very much like a human, sure, and uh, allowed you to make mistakes, all right... And it was a great app that you could also have any people could log in and get a game at any time. Yes. And then... And then you, it, would, it would basically clip you if you were yes. latent by 30 seconds or You something. could use that app as a bulletin board as well to let True. people know that these are where tournaments are. Kind of like walking into Sea Hunts and just getting a pickup game. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. You know, I got you. Even though Sea Hunts is now closed for every second. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, um, so just to kind of bring the state of the game to a little crescendo here. Uh, I think that one of the next things would be where would we want the game to be in five years, like in 2027. Right. Right. And I and my personal, now looking back at my history with the M42B since 2016 when I came back to Texas, about six years, uh, the, the most popular, most attended state championship was in 2017. Yeah, Hallettsville. First Saturday in March, 2017. Right. 184 teams. 184 teams. 368 68 people. People. Play in 42. In one room. In one room. Unbelievable. Uh, and we have never matched that since then. That's correct. But the way we got to that 184 teams in 2017 was because of an article that was written in Texas Co-op Magazine that reached a lot of rural farmer families that played the game and had a history in the family and said, oh, well, we should go play in Hallsville. The location of that article was the reason why a quarter of the people in that room showed up. That's right. So my recommendation would be one of the ways that we could grow the game 
and would be for um, the N42PA in the Treasury, and also them contacting the, cha the, the Chamber of Commerce of Hallisville, who would also benefit yes. by having a higher attendance. Why not repeat success? Right. Just let's put a... F and then, you know, you're not going to get them to write that article every year, but you can buy a full-page article in the Texas Co-op Magazine, which I would imagine doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Right. And, uh, and essentially just produce something that says, hey, first Saturday in March, Texas State Championship, Hallettesville, open tournament... You know, you could say how much it costs, whatever. And then invite everyone reading the magazine to come play in Houseville, and maybe you'll get some more of those people that came in 2017 to come back. I agree. So that is an idea. Anyway, so uh, what about, what are, is there any other things that you would like to see in 2027 that we don't have now? Uh, it would be nice if... Every, Aside from the average every, every Everywhere you went, all right, in the state of Texas... All right, that at least you had 16 teams showing up to a tournament, you know, and a few places that are very, very small, it's, it, it's smallish, but it would be nice to have a bigger presence in San Antonio. Sure. You know, or it, Houston. Or Houston. You know, you know that the players are there. Right. They're, they're just but not. But we just don't know why we're not, you know. Well, Houston is the ball. Yes. Right. So it, it's <laughs> balkanized into all these little sections, and right. everyone's like an hour from everyone else. That's and right. it's like, yeah, it's hard to get a, a quorum unless you're the Lincoln. That's right. <laughs> but that's what I'd like to see. And I'd like to see the, the membership of the M42 double. You know. Well, and, and I tell you a couple things I'm working on is that, you know, I work with at, at Google with a lot of uh, African Americans who are from Chicago who love spades. So I just feel like they would enjoy this game. If they really learned how to play. If you enjoy one Trump game, you usually enjoy... Other Trump other games. Trump right, games. exactly. So one of the things I'm working on is trying to see if I can set up some little uh, clinics where I basically encourage some of these people to play and then maybe grow and get some of them to come out. I'm also trying to work on Lyle Lovett uh, to write a song about Texas 42. I mean, there is like Desperado's Waiting on a Train that mentions 42, but it's not about 42. Right. You know, 42 songs. How does this not exist? Uh, that's another one. And then, uh, and I think the other one that I would like to see is I would like to see the Texas State Fair have like a giant 42 setup, like you see so many of these giant chests. I think you're onto something when you play at a very big venue that's able to reach national exposure. I'd like to play on the grounds of the Alamo, you know, where people could say, oh, look at this, you know, you know, people are playing. You right. Know, I mean, 42. it would be nice to say that the defenders of the Alamo were playing 42 when they were overrun by the men. Unfortunately, that is not... not rewrite That history. is not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's about it for the state of the game. Davy Crockett. Hell of a setter. Hell of a setter. Boy, that when he went with that 5-5 five five <laughs> and bid 37, oh my God. No, exactly. Uh, how is he not alive? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, no, that, that did not happen. <laughs> Um, right, exactly. But uh, yeah, so well, thank you, Jody. Sure. And uh, hopefully, uh, and of course, we're just two average Joes talking and giving our opinion about the state of the game. Absolutely. Uh, so every, someone else might see it differently, but uh, the, the overall goal is to, we love the game, and we would like to introduce and share it with others who might also love it. Sharing the love. Sharing the love. And uh, I will see you next time on the Texas 42 YouTube channel. And, uh, you know... Five, like five matters. Kings to you for not. Kings to you for not.